Do you remember that six-year-old that pulled out a gun in class and shot his teacher in the chest in Newport News, Virginia? Now, she survived. She got the kids out of the classroom. Just amazing. Uh, and she sued the school for, you know, $40 million, saying there were lots of warnings that day about that kid having a gun, six years old. How do the kids still have a gun after four different times of warnings? Well, now the police have decided to charge the six-year-old's mom. And I know a lot of you probably were saying all along, charge the parents, for heaven's sake. If a six-year-old gets his hands on a gun, for heaven's sake, it's the parents' fault. Bar none, end of discussion, period. Until you hear what mom actually did. So mom actually had the gun stored on the very highest shelf in her closet, had a trigger lock um, that, that she had employed on that, that gun, uh, said that her son has an acute disability. He was under a care plan at school that required parents actually to be there every day. Parents had to be at school with their kids. Imagine that, right? Special need on this kid was so severe that parents had to be there. This was the first week they didn't do that. I suppose they were trying to, you know, have the school take over for the special needs accommodations, right? They did not want that child in a special ed classroom, but it's still up to the school district to make sure the kid can access the curriculum. And somehow the kid did that. So this is what Deja Taylor, the mom of the kid, is facing. One count of felony child neglect and one misdemeanor count of recklessly leaving a loaded firearm so as to endanger a child. And for that, she could face, just on the felony, two to ten years in prison. I want to bring in Joshua Ritter. He's a criminal defense attorney and a former Los Angeles County prosecutor. Joshua, I want to get the prosecutor in you here um, to tell me how tough this is to charge a mother who, you know, it's not like she was buying the kid the gun and taking him to the range at age six. She actually took a bunch of steps to prevent the six-year-old from getting the gun and had a trigger lock on it. So why do you suppose this felony charge? Yeah, it's a really difficult decision for the prosecutors to have made. And I think what they're battling with is kind of the frustration that a lot of prosecutors have for the gun violence that we see happening throughout this country. We have an epidemic of young people minors, children who are committing acts of violence. And I think they're trying to figure out how to stop it in any way that they can. And maybe that's holding parents responsible. But like you pointed out, uh, one, children, though we don't hold them responsible for all their actions, are independent actors. They make their own decisions. They make their, they take their own actions on things. Sometimes to the, the despite the best efforts of the parents, they do it anyways. Um, and then if the mother is to be believed in this case, it sounds like she took the steps necessary to kind of protect against something like this. But it starts to beg the question, did she really take these steps? Because you begin to wonder, how did the kid know where the gun was? How was he able to get up to that high shelf in the closet to retrieve that gun? How was he able to unlock it? You know, a trigger lock has either a key or a combination. How was he able to take all of these steps? That's really going to become the pivotal point in this whole case. Okay, then there's the whole notion that there were four different warnings um, that this kid had brought a gun to school. Kids were crying, saying he was threatening them. Somebody saw it, and nobody did anything. So it looks like the prosecutors in this jurisdiction have convened a special grand jury to look at the potential for charging people at the school. What do you think the potential exposure is for them? Again, that's a difficult question. Civilly, I think it's much more clearly understood, and that's why she brought that lawsuit, because you can understand that they have a duty of care to her. They have a duty to protect everybody in that school. If they're getting warnings about this child, he has a previous history of violence. Uh, if, if other people are telling him they believe he has a gun, a child is saying he saw a gun, there's lots of missteps that took place, and you can understand the, the civil lawsuit. But convening the grand jury is looking for possible criminal liability here, and you begin to wonder, where does that end? If they're going to extend criminal liability beyond the child to the parent, now they're going to extend it to the, to the teachers and the administrators. You begin to wonder at what point do you stop holding people responsible for really the independent actions of someone else? I can understand and grasp why the mother, uh, because bear in mind, she's being uh, held responsible for child neglect. She's not being held responsible for the actual shooting. It's what she, her own child, how she may have neglected him and allowed him to have access to that weapon. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.